we sit to make life meaningful. The significance of our life is not experienced in striving to create some perfect thing. We must simply start with accepting ourselves. Sitting brings us back to actually who and where we are. This can be very painful. Self-acceptance is the hardest thing to do. If we can't accept ourselves, we are living in ignorance, this darkest night. We may still be awake, but we don't know where we are. We cannot see. The mind has no light. Practice is this candle in our very darkest room. The problem is not pain in the body, but the pain of undissolved suffering in your mind. And yet, that is what you've got. Better to look at it, at what it is, instead of being frightened by the appearance of it. You can feel pain, but you cannot have it. It is not yours. For some, the whole universe is aching. It's all a matter of degrees. It happens, so let it go. Blow the pain away with your breath. We have come together as this condensed form. So in this situation, just sit upright and align yourself with gravity. We may feel that sitting only brings us questions instead of answers. But if you settle on an answer and feel it is the end of your questioning, that is not so good. Buddha's sitting is beyond pure and impure holy and unholy. It is not something you understand. It's indescribable. Life has to be freed 
and lived instead of being known. The ideal of sitting is to forget the breath. Your breath and the breath of the universe are the same. You share the same breath. Sitting and breathing in stillness is like a person who just shot an arrow. A moment later, the result will be there. But all you know now is that the arrow is moving all right. It has left your realm, and yet you sense it is running well. Sitting or Zazen, in its purest form, is identical to complete and perfected enlightenment. That is why it has to be done for itself. The only special technique is total self-acceptance with one's total self. The total self-acceptance of where you are, your birth, the world, the whole thing. Otherwise you cannot sit, even for one minute. So let your breath sit with you. Let your eyeglasses sit with you. Let the house sit with you. Let your garment, whatever you wear, sit properly. People moving outside all sit with you but it is you taking the sitting posture. You gather them. In the end, something is sitting. Something sits. Facing Buddha in this galaxy is similar to facing Christ as a medium to God. Your life is in a similar relationship to Buddha and to the cosmic truth, so to speak. Your physical body is the ground where knowledge and understanding arise. Teaching doesn't come from outside of you.
your heartbeat, your breathing, are not all that are within you. Some cosmic reality is there, and you are experiencing it. The concept of Brahman and Atman in Hindu tradition is the same. The Godhead, God, and yourself is one piece of existence. All that exists is God and you, and others are part of you, so to speak. God dwells in you, and God is impossible to measure what it is, who it is, what it is doing to you. To some extent, the life of you and God is simultaneous. The relative self is related to the absolute presence. It is a constant interest. In your innermost place, this meeting with the absolute is the essential subject. When you succeed in it, At that moment, you feel your life is perfect. It's supposed to be perfect, but it doesn't, of course, continue its perfection moment after moment. Existence, the world of phenomena, is power itself. But each thing doesn't have power. If you presume a self-authorized power, you shrink existence. If you do not presume power, Power can fill existence. Because form is also the process of cessation, power cannot be possessed, but it can be felt. Existence is made of power. Life is energy itself. This energy and power is generously dispersed into all things. Power is experienced when you meditate, because your meditation is the action of denial of your personal power. So you become the center of the power, but you do not have power. It is like the experience of bowing when you really feel your bow. When bowing, you are nothing. 
You do not have anything. You're actually nothing. You disappear. You are like dust on the earth. When you stand up, you stand up as a person, a particular existence, and you feel everything. Existence deepens by recognition. The direction that this whole universe is moving is the direction of your deepening Zazen. It is not a personal feeling. It is the direction your existence is supposed to go. So it is a natural thing you are doing. A famous Zen teacher, Joshu, said that after 30 years of practice, you may start to speak about it. I have had more time than that with this effort, and yet still I am hesitant to talk. One reason is there is too much to talk about too deep, and often the talking doesn't help with practice. One must disappear in the sitting. That is the only way. No eyes, no nose, no ears. Everything chopped down and thrown away. Heart Sutra, Nagarjuna, 500 years of Buddhist theories, all put under no. This no is more exactly called no, no zero. What kind of I, what kind of mind can receive this insight of emptiness? It is very important to experience the complete negation of yourself, which brings you to the other side of nothing.
you go to the other side of nothing and you are held by the hand of the Absolute. You recognize yourself as the Absolute. So naturally there is no more insistence of a self, of yourself. You cannot even speak of no self within that Absolute. Before this, although everyone is there and helping you, you are a closed system. When you flip to the other side of nothing, you discover everyone, everything, is waiting for you there. 